Hey everyone, it's Ellis, and this is going to be the Patch 11.17 Notes Rundown. I am currently coming at you live from a hotel, but we can't miss patch notes. This isn't the world's patch, so I don't really know the size of the changes. If you guys have been following stuff, I've, I'm actually currently on vacation while I'm uh, filming this right now. So we're just going to get into the meat of things. We'll see how the patch actually is, and then that's pretty much it. RP pricing update. So some of the pricing is for Teamfight Tactics and League of Legends on September 8th is going to be modified. That's obviously really good. League client improvements. Well, hopefully, you know, they get around to banning people, but, you know, that's a little bit too much to ask. So anyways, champions. Akshan. E-based damage decreased, late AD ratio increased. Akshan can no longer revive teammates when he's dead. So this is just there as, as a means to circumvent, I guess, his ability to reset people with, like, Ignite or something like that, um, or, or for them to maybe to die to some other effect. Maybe he had red buff going and then he revives himself. Um, R cooldown upon cancellation decreased. That's fine. W going rogue. Akshan can no longer claim scoundrels when he's dead. That's fine. E, uh, e heroic swing is going to change. So it's going to go from 30 to 130, 10% bonus attack damage plus uh, the bonus attack speed modifier to 30 to 110 plus 17.5 bonus attack damage. And then uh, the, there's the, the bonus attack speed there. So what they're doing is they're trying to incentivize Akshan to be building AD because currently the most popular way to play him is on hit and attack speed, uh, which is opposite from the direction that they wanted to go with him. Our comeuppance, cooldown upon cancellation, uh, 15 seconds to 5 seconds. That's obviously really nice. It allows, yeah, I mean, that that's that's definitely a very nice change. He's got a lot of, a lot of bug fixes. Seems that a lot of people, actually, the more that Akshan is staying out, are finding him to be really good, but I wonder if that, that change there is going to impact him. But yeah, they're, they're trying to shift him into be more AD. Amumu, Q now has two charges. W damage increased early, decreased late. Our stun duration no longer scales. Health and armor growth decreased. Okay, health growth is going to be going from, is that 80 or is that 90? I'm lost sight, by the way. That's 80 to 75, so he's losing five per level for literally no reason. And he's getting less tanky inside of the jungle. He's just la randomly losing armor. Uh, Q bandage toss. Amumu now has two charges of Q. And so now the damage on it is down considerably. Um, he does have 15% ability power ratio, but the thing is, is that outside of Everfrost, you're usually never going for the AP item, you're always going for the tank items. Um, sometimes Amumu could go Everfrost, maybe we'll see some sort of variance with that, but it just doesn't seem really all that likely. I mean, I guess there is Leandri's as well. Charge cooldown 16 to 14 seconds, cooldown between casts 3 seconds, not reduced by ability haste. So, you can't queue someone and then immediately queue them again and perma stun them. Now, the thing is, is that Amumu's Q is a stun in itself, so the 3 seconds is not inherent three seconds because you're getting to do stuff while they're still immobilized um, and so it's actually less than it feels at least on the same target that you're going to be hitting um, it's not going to be feeling like the three seconds especially because the, the toss is in the air and everything like that um, original cooldown uh, was 10 to 8 seconds but again now you get the, the two charges the thing that I am wondering though is what ends up happening when if you have high CDR on this I mean it, it probably ends up becoming very similar but obviously the damage is not there um, however his mid and late game is maybe going to be a a little bit stronger. However, in exchange for this, base damage uh, per second is going to be up flat on Despair, um, and the max health damage per second, 1 to 2%, plus 0.5% per 100 HP, goes to 1.16%. Okay, so it's actually just losing, uh, well, maybe not. Maybe maybe there's a math equation you're going to definitely have to check out Freak's patch rundowns to figure out that. Our Curse of the Sad Mummy. 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds used to be, like, something that was kind of nice on the R. I don't think this is going to break him. What I do think is that the direction that Raya is going is the correct direction if you want to see a Mumu succeed at higher MMR, um, it, because it is all centered into his Q. One of the suggestions that I used to have on his Q was to actually shift more damage into it, um, Thus, if you hit it, you were rewarded, and then actually take away damage from his W or his E, which is actually, interestingly, sort of what they've done. I just think that the uh, the fact that they, they added more damage on the premise that if you hit two Qs on the same target within a short time duration, you're actually dealing more damage, um, which is interesting. I would have liked to have seen them probably actually not... I don't know. That's uh, a little weird. Also, I think his passive probably needs something to be done with it. Echo. Passive damage against monsters increase. So 150 to 200%. I can't wait for Echo to be back. So Echo gets a lot of benefit because he's one of the junglers that was not one of the full clear junglers, but with the thing that Riot did to XP changes as well as gold inside of the jungle, what ends up happening is Echo, uh, he hasn't been around since, but that is a indirect buff to him that happened in the past, and that has to be remembered. Now, the fact that he's getting, you know, faster clear speed because his, his damage 
charges being increased is also really big because it means that not only did he get that pseudo, well, not pseudo, but he got that indirect rubber banding buff. Um, other junglers have been getting tagged along the way, and so Echo suddenly, you know, actually becomes a, a real thing that could maybe come back, and I always hate that because Echo doesn't actually need a whole lot of base levels in order to be super oppressive, um, and generally he only needs, like, one or two items inside of the jungle if he really starts get to get going to in order to be effective, and he has a scaling jungler, so that is pretty nice. Evelyn, our cooldown decrease. This isn't what Evelyn needs to be competitively viable. It is going to matter inside a solo queue. This could maybe convert to, like, a 0.5 or 1% win rate buff, and the reason that I say that is because one of the things I started realizing with the patterns of of riots, buffs, and nerfs is that things like this, you have to ask yourself, how does it impact a solo queue game in the first 10 minutes? Um, and if ever the buff or the change in, in, in you know, in something in this regard is going to maybe be able to convert into an extra kill over like a hundred games, right? Um, then that probably translates into something over a, a high enough percentage or high enough sample size that it ends up affecting the win rate in some regard. And so her R being able to come online, thus converting to an even earlier gank than she would have otherwise been able to, means that I think given a large enough sample size, it probably does impact her win rate in some regard. But again, it's not what she needs to be competitively viable, but it will shift the needle inside of solo queue. Gangplank. Q now counts as a range basic attack, E scales better with crit, barrel recharge increase, but max charges now increase with rank. Okay, passive, trial by fire. So it's going to go from 30% to 15 to 30% by level, so there's going to be some trade-off where he's basically just missing t uh, tier 1.5 boots um, in the early stages of the game, which is definitely something that he does utilize. Q, parlay, counts as a range basic attack. What they're doing here is they're actually making Gangplank a lot less tanky, um, because what they're doing is they're hurting his grasp of the undying. What this could end up meaning is, and I've, I've talked to Onion briefly, if you guys don't know who Onion is, he's widely considered one of the best gangplank specialists in Korea, he's always high challenger, he's who a lot of Western pro players reach out to when they want to talk about gangplank and whatnot, um, he thinks that there is a possibility that gangplank will now just start going scorch uh, with... Uh, airy and in, in, in terms of early game power, but this does mean that you lose some stuff from the resolve tree and obviously you lose a bit of HP. Now, gangplank inside a laning phase can get usually anywhere from like 20 plus parlays off, which converted to quite a lot of HP, and then obviously in the later stages of the game, he also gets a little bit of innate tankiness inside of the team fight, and his sustain inside of laning phase because of all that HP that he's siphoning is definitely something that he is going to be missing, but maybe it can be offset with the airy and the scorch, and so we'll have to see if that ends up being the path. However, I do think that they're changing something about like fleet footwork inside of this patch and if they are changing something about fleet footwork inside of this patch then maybe because of the crit change and everything else that they're doing in the game playing maybe he just goes fleet footwork and he just tries to out sustain you rather than also try to simultaneously damage you um because i think that they're changing fleet footwork on champion cast not on minion cast which means that his parlays would gain um increased effectiveness um however um Oh, I, I, I guess Fleet Footwork on ranged is also something. But anyways, E Powder Keg, Barrel Critical Strike Chance is multiplied by 125%, so they really are trying to get him to go for Crit Plank, which also means that he's going to be going Shield Bow. So when Gangplank goes Shield Bow, what's going to end up happening is he will have that innate tankiness that he's missing from Grasp of the Undying and the Standard Resolve Tree. But outside of that, uh, I guess he's not going to really have too much. But Shield Bow also means that he's missing, he's going to be missing Attack Speed. And attack speed um, is something that he really likes by going Trinity Force, but uh, fortunately this will mean that people do start going Divine Blunderer um, on Gangplank, and so I guess that is an upside. But yeah, it does look like it's probably going to be some sort of variation of like Essence Reaver Shield Bow or something, um, and then Eye Edge after that, and then after that, I mean, he's going to want to keep going Crit, um, so I'm not I'm not really sure where he'll go after that one. I'll probably go Lord Dominic's Regard, um, because even though Cyril does gives him a lot of CDR, it doesn't give him the Crit, so I think that he'll probably want to be going uh, LDR or Lord Danny's regard, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then after that, I don't know what his actual last crit item would end up being, but that'll probably round out his build, um, if I could assume. Graves! So unfortunately, me and Nemesis... Got another champion ruined here. Korea did start picking up on it in mid and top lane. No one was really playing it in AD carry role, but I think that's totally fine. Inside of jungle, I mean, obviously people were doing the lethality variation with Lord Danny's regards uh, second. If you built Collector, I mean, you're a Delta. Um, you know, you're not quite Sigma. Uh, but Q, end of the line. Um, so the mana cost is going up. So this is actually the best thing you could hope for because good Graves players are still going to be able to actually figure out how to lane as him. Maybe there's some 
merit to going Mirror Mana on him inside of Laning Phase in order to just offset this, because that would also then translate into your ability um, to actually utilize W and E spam a little bit more. But Graves is just having something that he was given before Undone. And since then, Graves has actually received a lot of buffs. Um, so even though Graves received this mana buff uh, a very long time ago, he's still up in other regards because he's been given so much free damage in his other areas. So mid Graves, top Graves, the Lethality, you do the Eclipse into LDR or Cyrilda's second, and then from there his build does change depending on what you did build. Um, he, is a, he is a monster, and I do like that they did not completely gut him. Aurelia, okay, full build at uh, two minutes. All right, so Aurelia, Q healing decreased. Wow, do you say it ain't so? 12 to 20% AD to 8 to 16% AD. So that is definitely a big hit. The So she is just missing a, a flat 4% now on her AD. I mean, it's not it's not the end of the world. She's still going to be full build at Vamp Scepter. Um, but yeah, I mean, she can go and cry about it. No one, no one really feels bad for her. Kane, Assassin Kane, passive damage decrease. This is the weirdest thing in the world. This is actually probably all being done solely because of Charismai in NA because I don't know anyone really who plays Kane in either Korea or in Europe. So this just strikes me as uber bizarre. Um... Shadow Assassin bonus damage, 12 to 44 to 8 to 30. It's, it's just totally out of line. Who walks into Riot and thinks, you know what? Yeah, let's, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's remove 14% magic damage from his passive. I think that's a great choice. I have no idea <laughs> who is at the Riot balance change meeting that thinks like, you know what? Let's just, let's just do it. 14%, like... No, we don't need anything. It's just such a random, excessive number to literally lose 25% of his damage is so bizarre on his passive. That is so outrageous. I have no idea what they're thinking. Leona, W bonus resistance is decreased. Again, no one's going to cry about it. Um, Lissandra, base attack damage decreased. Q monocross decreased. So, base attack damage is up. I don't know if this actually affects her CSing with her Q or her E or her W on, like, spellcasters or melees. Maybe it does. But again, check out Freak's patch rundown for that. Q ice shard 60. Uh, wait, what is that? 60 to... What? 60 to 80 to 55 to 75. So she's getting probably one extra free cast in lane. That, that's how you should read this. I mean, she's probably going to cast Q about 12 times um, inside of laning phase before going oom um, when you consider her E and her W and maybe her R and stuff. She's probably getting a free Q. That, that's the way that you should read her Q. All right, Lucian. So these are the changes everyone was pissed off about. So uh, let's just read how they apparently like ruined him. In some way. Base attack damage is going down by two. Passive Light Slinger. Ally buffs empower Lucian's next two basic attacks to deal an additional 14 plus 10% AD magic damage. So he's not getting value uh, if he builds like LDR or like Lethality or anything like that. Lucian can store up four vigilant, uh, Vigilance basic attacks at a time. Ardent Blaze. 72 60. Triggers Vigilance when an ally champion uh, damages a marked target. That's really good that um, someone else can obviously help it. Are the Culling. Number of shots 22 to 34 uh, to 22 plus 25 percent critical strike chance so there is a break point in mid game if you are going crit on lucian where you will get more shots but the shots now uh deal less damage so again check out freaks patch notes rundown and look at what is going on there it does also have now increased ability power scaling and uh, lucian's never going to be getting ability power but i do suppose that if like there is a staff of flowing water on the enemy or on your team and you get enchanted by ivern or you get enchanted by lulu or you get enchanted by karma or something like that um it will convert to uh, some extra shots um the other thing about this is baron will now give you uh, maybe an extra shot or something uh, which I, I i guess that you know you have to consider that um i'm not sure if lucian will totally die by this i think that there definitely could be lanes where he is going to be uber oppressive if he has an enchanter that's just permanently buffing him or something obviously moonstaff uh, as a combo or just any variation of moonstone renewer is going to be beneficial for him uh, because he's going to be permanently getting the buffs permanently getting the marks and whatnot and his e is unchanged so his e does reduce the cooldown and, and everything so that he's still fine in that regard nami base health, base health increased w cost decreased late so ebb and flow apparently is the skill that she maxes first and her base health is up by less than an auto attack at rank one no one cares senna critical strike chance uh, penalty reduced attack speed ratio increased so operate increase so senna is buffed all around both uh far uh, fasting senna and both 80 senna um is just buffed all around but obviously what riot is trying to do is incentivize farming senna um, but it should be noted that all of her variations are up. I think that they're doing this just because pro players have stopped playing her recently, um, and I don't think that pro players have stopped playing her recently because of anything that has to do with Senna. Um, I think that they've stopped playing her recently primarily just because maybe they got bored of her because she was so prevalent for so long. But if other marksmen continue to get hit, then what's going to end up happening is that Senna will inevitably come back because her fasting ability is basically her most under underutilized aspect of her because people didn't even begin to experiment with as many things as they could have done with her down in bot 
bot lane. We saw some variations like Senna and Wukong. We saw uh, Senna and Cho'Gath come out at one point. We saw, you know, Senna, you know, we never really got to see like Senna uh, Soraka, Senna Seraphine, um, variations like this. We never, we never got to see stuff like that, but yeah. Timo, E on hit damage increase. So it should be noted that his E was originally, I think, at 10, and now it's going to go to 14. So he's just gotten four flat damage at all points. That's really big. It's like he it's like he's starting the lane with half an extra longsword, um, which is super big, especially because it's magic damage. Viego, attack range reduce, base healing on possession reduce, scaling increase, Q multiplier from crit trance increase. Okay, so they're trying to make Viego um, go into critical strike chance Viego, and I think that's totally fine. What I think is going to end up happening is Viego and the Vape Nash, uh, it can't be stopped no matter what Riot tries. His possession aspect is basically the defining aspect of him. The other problem with Viego is he slots into a lot of team compositions because um, a lot of people aren't very proficient at drafting against him. No one really drafts long range. No one really drafts like extreme poke or extreme terrain control and stuff. And so Viego oftentimes gets rewarded. Um, and in pro play, for some reason, he doesn't get banned. So it is very confusing. Um, so Viego, his passive, Sovereign's Dominance, um, the healing upon possession is going to be going down. Um, however, the bonus attack damage is going to be going up, and the attack speed is going to be going up. So it's going to end up scaling. Okay. Q-Blade of the Ruin King, uh, 0 to 75% to uh, 0 to 100%, which means that, okay, it's actually buffed in the later stage. So he's actually buffed mid and late game. This is insane. He's legitimately buffed mid and late game. Oh, but his attack range is down by 25. Hold the, yeah, hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phone, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll cry about it. Bigger players are just gonna learn to adapt. That's literally it. They're just gonna learn to adapt. They're gonna go shield bow, and everything's fine. Zaya, Q cast time decreases with attack speed. R damage increase. Q double daggers. 0 0.25 to 0, uh, 0 0.25 to 0 0.1 uh, at 0 uh, to 0 0.25 one five percent bonus attack speed. Okay. Feather storm uh, base damage is up. That's a lot of damage to get for her for free. That's actually quite a bit. Um, that is actually really good. These are really good changes for Zaya. Um, I do think that Zaya still remains a conditional AD carry. Um, she only exists when people are coming into her. Um, Zaya Rakan is obviously a combo that, you know, you don't want to totally scoff at, but, it, I mean, it is what it is. Zed, so 420 Weeaboo Slayer, not going to be hitting Challenger this year. Q uh, ratio increased, E ratio decreased, Q uh, R cooldown uh, increased late. So, um, he's, uh, he's still going to be getting, I mean, with the CDR that he has, he's still only going to be ulting once a minute. Um, so it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't even matter. E Shadow Slash, uh, bonus attack damage, uh, is, is going to be down by 15% bonus AD. Um, however, his ratio on his uh, Q shuriken is going to be up by 10%. So if he hits multiple shurikens, uh, he's actually going to be dealing more damage than before. Uh, and so I, I guess in that regard, it's considered a buff. The other thing about this is that it's a buff in laning phase uh, because it's Q. Um, so uh, maybe, you know what? Actually, maybe it's a buff. Maybe it's actually a buff. Maybe maybe this is a buff. And uh, yeah, I think maybe it could be a buff. Divine Blunderer loses 5 AD. Good. You know, less people build it, I guess. Hallbreaker up by 100. This isn't why people aren't building the item Riot, okay? The reason people aren't building Hallbreaker is because the amount of percent conversion that Hallbreaker actually impacts your speed to raise the turret is negligible. That's why people aren't building it. Because the enemy can still just meet you in the lane... Eat the entire wave. It doesn't do anything. You take it on Fiora. You take it on Camille. You take it on. You take it on Jax. You take it on any split pusher, and you actually measure the amount of time difference that it allows you to raise the turret, and it's negligible. It's not worth sacrificing another item that gives you way more utility or way more power in some other area in exchange to kill the turret five seconds faster or something. It's, it's just not worth it whatsoever. So that's why people aren't building it. 100 HP is not going to make them build it. The item needs something to be more oppressive. It needs to have its main stats actually siphoned away, and then when the person is isolated in a side lane, they actually need to be steroided. And if that ends up happening, and suddenly they truly are forced into only being a side lane player, if literally building the item removes their ability to join team fights because of the passive or like a debuff aura or something like that, then you have a very interesting item that creates a very interesting play style. Riot doesn't see it that way, so I don't, I don't really know. I don't know what to say. Serpent's Fang. Uh, Lethality is going to be going down by 6. This item is overbought. This is one of the most disgusting things that happens in pro plays when people get, like, flavor of the month. It's predominantly happening in China and Korea um, because the players don't really, you know, look uh, or open a calculator and try to figure out what's going on. So, like, you have people doing that really donkey-dumb Mythicless Varus build, um, and it, it's just obviously really bad. So hopefully this 
this is good. Uh, Lethality just gets taken away. I'm tired of seeing this item uh, be misbought. And while I while I think that it, it is a really good item when it's correctly bought, um, I am tired of seeing it misbought. So I'm happy that it's getting nerfed because now people just won't you know they won't use their brain. And they'll just stop building it. Um, Wit's End has become an early uh, power rush item. I mean, yeah, of course, because it has too many stats. 15 to 60 linear scaling, 1 to 18 to 15 at levels 1 to 8, 25 to level uh, 9 to 18. So again, check out Freak's patch note rundown to find out what the breakpoint is. It is going to be missing some damage early on, but it's not inherently why you build it. It's because you build it because there's no better item that helps you curve into mid game better um, in exchange for also getting the resists and the power and the attack speed and stuff. So. Humans Ghost Blade. Um, so the gold cost is down by 100, and now you lose 5 AD in exchange for 15 ability haste. I think it overall is a buff. I would, I, I think it's a buff. Normally I'm not for losing AD, but I do think it's a buff because this build, this item is already kind of situational, and I think that they actually still need to do more to it to get people to build it. Fleet Footwork. Okay. Nine, or 3 to 60 based on level, plus 30% AD, plus 20% AP, to 10 to 100 based on level, plus 40% AD, plus 30% um, uh, bonus AD, sorry, plus 30% um, ability power. Okay. Healing versus minions. 100% to 20% range, to 20% uh, melee, to 10% range. Okay. So it is a buff, so I do think this might be Gangplank's, um, this might be Gangplank's rune. Um, another champion to note that this is uh, going to be buffed for is probably Kossadin, um, because Kossadin, uh, you know, already does take this in a lot of instances, and so he's just getting extra HP that he used to not get before. Void Clash is going to be up. The tier lists will be on Patreon uh, this week, Wednesday or Thursday, and then we will uh, go from from there. Updated system requirements are updated, and this is obviously coming um, in in uh, light of Vex's arrival. That is going to be the next champion, the Yordle, um, and she is going to be coming out. And that is going to be it for all the champions. And so normally I do a recap, but I'm trying to keep this one a little bit short and condensed because I know that the quality is not uh, up to par, so we're just going to go through all the skins. What is that? That is Nightmare Akali. This is the best skin line in the, like, I love this skin line. It genuinely feels like a horror theme, and I like everything that they've done with it. This is a great Shaco skin. It does feel a little bit alien. This feels like almost like a demonic alien uh, from another planet uh, has come, um, and that's what it feels like. This is a really cool skin. I really feel like they should have had Jin. This looks like Jin meets Twisted Fate, and so in that regard, I kind of don't like it, but I don't know. It also has, like, a very gambity feel to it. I, I just like everything that they're doing with it. Um, and then we move on here. Uh, I don't know what this is. It looks like it could be Darius, judging by the axe, is that actually who it is? Is it Darius? It is Darius, okay. So it, it does look like Darius. Um, he kind of looks like, I forget what his name is from one of the games. Um, uh, is it Sigma? Uh, is it Sigma from, from Mega Man or something? I, I, I'm not totally familiar. Um, he does look like a Sigma male. I, I will be completely honest with you. Um, so there's that. Uh, I have no idea what this is, but uh, does look pretty good. I mean, all the skins look somewhat similar. You know what also the little eye thing is reminding me of? It's reminding me of that thing from Resident Evil, if you guys remember. The eye that would open on some of the, uh, some of the characters, and then, yeah. Uh, okay, what is this? It looks like it... Uh, is this Aurelia? Or are they trying to sell skins? Or what... What exactly is this? Is this Aurelia? Oh, it's Zaya. Brave Phoenix Zaya, Seraphine, and Anivia. Oh, the, the, the Anivia skin is amazing. Oh my god, it looks divine. This looks like it could be a legendary Pokemon. Th this, is, this is such a beautiful bird. This is such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bird. It is so, so, so pretty. I love it. I love the color scheme that they went with. I love the hue. It's such, a, and also, this is the only skin I opened up the Chroma Sword because I wanted you guys to really see this. This is Seraphine, but I can't really tell that it's Seraphine, okay? Honestly, it's looking like some, like, messed up version of Miley Cyrus, and honestly, where has she even been? I haven't seen her since Wrecking Ball. Um, but that is, uh, that's pretty much it for Seraphine. Um, and then, yeah, I opened up this... It is just so beautiful. I think this is the base skin over here. It's so pretty. You need to get... If you're an Anivia player, okay? If you're DJ Yasin, you need to... Okay, everyone left the game. Okay, because you're an Anivia player. Actually, everyone left the game, so... All right, well, that's kind of sad. So we're actually getting the truth here in the splash art that everyone left the game because you're an Anivia player, but you really do need to get the skin. This is Articuno over here. Um, we don't really have... This is kind of like a shiny Zapdos uh, is what we're going. Uh, this is Latios or La Latios. Okay, that's what this one is. Um, I'm not really sure what any of these ones are. We're not going to use these chromas. These chromas, these are AFK. We're never, we're never getting these. This is like a shiny Moltres. 
This is, uh, it also looks like zero from Mega Man if he transformed into a bird, so yeah. We can definitely use Shiny Moltres, Shiny Zapdos, Articuno, and we can use uh, Latios or Latios, and then the base skin just looks beautiful. The, ba the base skin looks divine, honestly, it's just so good. And that is it for the 11.17 patch note rundown. Now, the next one, I believe, is the world's one. Lemonisus will be rejoining, I think, for that rundown, so you guys can check that out here in two weeks, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and that was pretty good.